Okay, so in this video, we will tackle a very challenging limit where McLaurin series will provide us with a surprisingly elegant solution. So here's the limit. We are letting x approach 0. The numerator will be e to the 5x minus 1 r squared over the cube root of x squared minus the sine of x squared. So as always when we're considering a limit, we want to look at what kind of case we're dealing with. As x goes to 0, 5x goes to 0, e to the 0 is 1, minus 1 is 0, squared is 0, over, well as x goes to 0, x squared goes to 0, sine of 0 is 0, the q root of 0 is of course 0. So we do have here a 0 over 0 case. So on the surface, it looks like we can apply L'Hopital's rule. But if you do apply L'Hopital's rule, after you differentiate the numerator and the denominator, you will find that the new limit is even worse than the original limit. And if you try to apply L'Hopital's rule again, things will only get worse. So here, even though on the surface, it may look like L'Hopital's rule is a good idea, it actually is a terrible idea. So now, let's tackle this limit using our knowledge of McLaurin series for e to the x and sine of x. Let me call the limit L. So recall that the McLaurin series for e to the x is the following. And I will write it in its expanded form. So e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial and so forth. And this equality is valid for all values of x. And so we can replace x by anything we want. Since we're considering in our limit e to the 5x, we will replace x by 5x, which will give us that e to the 5x is equal to 1 plus 5x plus 5x all squared is 25x squared over 2 factorial plus 5x all cubed is 125x cubed over 3 factorial and so forth. Well, we're considering the term e to the 5x minus 1, so let's subtract from both sides 1. So e to the 5x minus 1 is equal to, for all values of x, 5x plus 25x squared over 2 factorial plus 125x cubed over 3 factorial and so forth. And now the key observation is that we are letting x tend to 0. So x is taking on smaller and smaller values. Well, compared to the 5x term, the multiple of x squared and x cubed and so forth are all insignificant as larger and larger powers of something that is shrinking to 0 are way smaller than smaller powers. So compared to the x term, the x squared, x cubed, and so forth are all insignificant. So this is approximately, therefore, the dominant term, namely 5x. But this is only valid, of course, for very small values of x. So if x is approximately 0. So now we have an approximation for the numerator. When x is very small, e to the 5x minus 1 is approximately simply 5x. Well, what about sine of x squared? Well, let's now use the Maclaurin series of sine of x. And again, I will use the expanded form. Sine of x, if we write the first few terms out, is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 
over 7 factorial, and so forth. Now, of course, if you recall, this equality is valid for all values of x, so x can be replaced by any other expression. So we can replace x, of course, by x squared, which we will give us that the sine of x squared is equal to x squared minus x squared cubed is x to the 6 over 3 factorial plus x squared to the 5 is x 10 over 5 factorial minus x squared to the 7 x to the 14 over 7 factorial and so forth. Well, the term we are considering under the cube root is x squared minus sine squared. So keep the x squared here, subtract the sine squared, and send all the other terms on the other side, therefore they will become negated. And what this gives us is that x squared minus sine squared, or I should say sine of x squared, will be equal to positive x to the 6 over 3 factorial, negative x to the 10 over 5 factorial, positive x to the 14 over 7 factorial, and so forth. So we have here the Maclaurin series of x squared minus sine of x squared. And again, the idea is to look back to what value is x approaching. x is approaching 0, so x is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the dominant term of this Maclaurin series for small values of x is the x to the 6. As larger powers of something very small are even smaller. So these terms, the higher powers of x, are insignificant compared to x to the 6 as x is very close to 0. And so we now have the approximation for x squared minus sine of x squared when x is close to 0. The approximation is the first term of the Maclaurin series, x to the 6 over 3 factorial. But of course this is only valid if x is very close to 0. And now we're good to go. We can look at the initial limit and replace each expression by its approximation coming from the Maclaurin series in each case. So L, the original limit, Well, e to the 5x minus 1, when x is very small, is pretty much 5x, so we'll have 5x all squared over the cube root of and when x is very small, x squared minus sine of x squared is approximately x to the 6 over 3 factorial. And now, well, let's simplify. If you square 5x, you get 25x squared. Let's apply the cube root here on the two terms. So the cube root of x to the 6 is x squared. Divided by, and here 3 factorial is 6, so this will be the cube root of 6. Well, if we divide by a fraction, we of course multiply by its reciprocal. So we will get 25x squared times the reciprocal, which is the cube root of 6 over x squared, and of course the x squares both cancel, and we're left with something trivial, namely 25 cube root of 6. And here's our limit. And notice how, once we had the approximation for each part of our limit, coming from the Maclaurin series, once we had these approximations, how essentially trivial the limit became. 
It literally is a one-line solution once we have the proper approximation coming from the Maclaurin series. So even though the initial limit looks extremely challenging, once we simplify it with proper approximations coming from our knowledge of Maclaurin series, in this case namely the Maclaurin series of e to the x and sine of x, the limit becomes trivial. And again, if you don't believe that this is truly elegant, try to apply L'Hopital's rule a, few, you know, a couple of times on this limit and judge for yourself. But I maintain the fact that this is a, an extremely elegant solution to an extremely challenging limit. So hopefully this makes you appreciate how useful Maclaurin series can be at times. And that's it.